Hi there, it's Billy Tarasio from Modern Law, and today we're going to talk about a number of the ways that your separate property can become marital property, or how your actions during your marriage can create an interest that the community has on your separate property. So first, what's separate property? This could be an inheritance. It could be a gift. It could be money that you earned or assets that you had before you got married. Now, when you come into that marriage and you have your separate property or you get a gift or you get an inheritance, it's separate property. As it stands on that day, it is not divisible and your spouse does not have a claim on it in divorce. Now, more often than not, those separate assets become marital assets through behaviors and actions that you and your spouse take. So let's let's go through some examples. Let's say you um, are gifted a membership interest in a family business. Um, It's gifted to you. It is your separate property. If you have a revocable trust that you put all of your property in to avoid probate for your family. So let's say your family has a very um, typical and basic tax planning a state that involves a revocable trust and you put a, a living trust and you put all of your assets in your living trust. Um, I, I just did this. I just went to the bank and, and put my bank accounts into my living trust. Um, that's a payable on death thing now. It avoids probate. Makes perfect sense. A lot of us do that. When you do that, if your living trust has beneficiaries that is your spouse and your kids, you've now created a marital interest in that separate property. Even if you did that solely for estate planning purposes and not to change the character of the property from separate property and marital property. So that's one way that it happens. Another way that it happens is in the way that you use the money. So let's say you inherit money, um, it's separate property, uh, and you decide that you're going to buy a vacation home or you're going to pay off all your debt. Once you use that money to pay off all of your joint debt, um, that money is now gone and the assets that have been created uh, are now are now marital assets. So, so your inheritance, your separate interest is gone. Another example is um, let's say you've got separate money and uh, that you keep in a separate account. You really want to keep it separate. You do keep it separate. You then go to buy a house or you take out a business loan. Let's say you take out a business loan And the business is community property. The business was started during the marriage, but you pledge your separate property as a security interest for your community business. Well, now you may have created a community interest in your separate property. So over time, the more time that goes on that you're married, the more likely it is that whatever you had before you got married that was separate or whatever you inherited or whatever type of separate property you have will start to, there are so many ways that the community could then have an equitable lien or an equitable interest. Another example is, let's say you had a separate property business that you came into. You had a business before you got married. You get married, you keep it completely separate. You work, you grow it during the marriage. Well, the growth on your separate property could now create a community lien on a portion of the growth because your actions grew your separate property while you were married. And any action you take while you're married is on behalf of the community and for the benefit of the community. I hope you can see how sticky this is. Here's another example. I had a client who um, uh, was gifted a car when he was 16 years old. He had this car obviously well before he was married, um, all through his very long marriage. And he spent some money restoring it. Um, he, you know, got some parts, he painted it with his son, he put time and money into this car. Well, the community now had a lien for community efforts and community money that went in restoring the separate property. The bottom line here, I hope you can see how tricky it is to keep separate property separate when you're actually married and how the best thing you can possibly do is get yourself a postnuptial agreement or a prenuptial agreement that makes clear what your intent is or you have to not touch it. You can't use these assets. You're basically stuck being unable to use your separate property assets for growth through any actions or leveraging them because the community will, will or could obtain an interest. 
So it's tricky. It's not something you should take on yourself. You should think about disclaimers. You should think about postnuptial agreements. You should think about um, really intentionally protecting that property because as you know, there's a 50% chance you may end up getting a divorce. And if you want to protect those interests, then um, you need to do so early. If you have questions about that or if we can help you, just let us know. The attorneys at Modern Law would love to help you. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll talk soon.